Heads up, while most of my content is family friendly and suitable for all ages, Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB rating system, and as such the videos in this Let's Play are likely to contain mild blood and or violence possibly at the same time. So viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back to Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations, everybody. Let's just get started right now, shall we? So that we can get, make the most of this episode. Sure. February 9th, 11.15 a.m., District Court Defender Lobby number one. Only an hour, 15 minutes uh, with bikini, apparently. We spent longer than that in recording footage, that's for, yep. for sure. Excuse me, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm not really sure what to say. Iris, we only have 20 minutes. There are two things which I need to ask you before we reconvene. All right. I'll help you any way I can. First, about that night, you really didn't go to the Inner Temple, correct? The last witness claims to have met and talked with you in the training hall. Either you or Sister Bikini is lying. Mr. Edgeworth, it is just as I said yesterday. Until the incident occurred, I was in my own room in Hasakura Temple. Very well. The second thing, then. That night, the temple snowmobile was used in between the time Sister Bikini returned to the main hall and when she bore witness to the murder. Sometime between 10.30 and 11 p.m. that night, were you the one who used the snowmobile? There's only one key for the snowmobile. The only person who could have used it was me. So it was you? But why? What made you go out to Dusky Bridge? I'm sorry, Mr. Edgeworth. Millions. Oh my. Yeah. Iris? I can't tell you about that yet. Yet? Not until her safety is confirmed. Oh, for Pearl? Her? The safety of the Acolyte. Oh. Okay. The Acolyte, huh? She must be talking about Maya. Maybe she went out because, you know... Sister Bikini was there, and the Acolyte wasn't, and all that stuff. Mm. Iris, look me in the eye and tell me the truth. Did you kill Elise Donum? No matter who or what may come, I could never take a life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure! Okay. As I thought, no psycho lock. Yeah, but my on <laughs> Matt on guard also had that. I didn't kill a man. I just I hired kill, somebody I to do kill. it. <laughs> yeah. I think what also, there was a few things where it's like, I never left my room. Maybe Elise Donum was like, um, could I borrow a pillow? <laughs> I did it. I didn't leave my room. <laughs> exact words. Very well. It is my job to get to the truth. You'll discover this for yourself soon enough. February 9th, 11.36 a.m., District Court. Oh, Courtroom boy. number seven. This will be fun. Court will now reconvene. Miss Von Karma, where is the witness? During the break, a man was detained for suspicious behavior in the gallery. Suspicious behavior? He was sketching something very intensely. Dare I ask what the witness was sketching when he was detained? He drew a terrifying woman armed with a demonic face and a vicious whip. I can only presume that his intention was to capture you- Ah! <laughs> anyway, it's time to drag this pathetic excuse for an artist before the court. Lori Stoneham, I hope you're ready. Get in here. It would seem that whip is going to see plenty more use <laughs> today. Of course he was like, oh my gosh, hot gal, gotta draw! Ouch! Your sketch is in contempt of this court. Hey! I was just artistically rendering it out! You tried to run away from the bailiff who was trying to hand you your sub Noah. Subpoena. Subpoena? Subpoena. Your subpoena, correct? W look! I'm nothing but a fledgling artist training out in the mountains! I'm only down here in the city because I ran out of green paint. Well, to use the technical term for the color, Viridian. Larry, this isn't an art store now, is it? I know! I graduated junior high, okay? Look, art is all about working in the fields, isn't it? Working in the fields? I presume he wanted to say field work. I hope. Th that's it! Thanks, buddy! It's kind of sad that I was able to understand his mangled <laughs> train wreck of a sentence. I just had to stop in here and found a wonderful new model. 
So see, I've got nothing to do with this trial. At all. I expect all of your faces to be red when you realize the mistake. Bright red. Or, to use the technical term, Crimson Lake. <laughs> Ouch! Ow! 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 Ouch! Ouch! Stop your pathetic babbling and test like a man- or testify like a man! <laughs> test like a man! <laughs> Refrain from whipping me, Miss Von Karma. Cross whipping is as bad as cross checking. Witness, that was all your fault. Testify now. <laughs> this is almost too much for me. You've been on the witness stand a couple times. It's fine. Twice you now, yeah. You're good. Witness testimony, what I saw. I was at that lodge out in the mountains, looking up at the stars that night. I walked to the bridge a number of times, but I didn't see a snowmobile. <laughs> I didn't meet anyone at the bridge that night. The girl I was waiting for didn't show up. My teacher died on me. I'm all alone now. Aren't I, Angie? <laughs> Yeah, the girl you were waiting for definitely <laughs> didn't show up. Witness, please refrain from talking directly to the lawyers during your testimony. <laughs> I'm just a nobody. Nothing but a small, worthless man, aren't I? <laughs> Nobodies don't have I'm art, awesome. Sora. <laughs> 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 and why wasn't I asked for my name and occupation or anything else? <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, this man seems to have quite a severe inferiority complex. He's recently been the cause of numerous incidents. I think he's finally realized for himself just how much of a nuisance he has been to other people. Yeah, that's right! I'm behind everything! Every case! Um... Watch out, okay? Just touching me will make you eternally unhappy! Okay, maybe don't say that. Well then, let us proceed with the cross-examination with no touching, thank you. We can delve into other details at a later time. <laughs> I'm behind every case! I'm behind everything! I think the funny thing is that Maybe the something incredible he saw was that Iris showed up in the snowmobile. And he's like, oh, she, she was doing came. tricks! She came! No, like, oh. like she came because of the letter, and she's like, what? And then tries to, you know. In Larry's mind, she like shows up in the snowmobile, like, like doing all these tricks, like, kicks up, like, like snow Larry. in the form of, I love you, Larry, and just drives up. <laughs> <laughs> so good to work out! <laughs> what I saw. That would be great. I was at the lodge out in the mountains, looking up at the stars. At the lodge? You mean the terrible hut? Whatever is the matter, Mr. Edgeworth? This one single statement is so full of contradictions. For a moment there, I thought I was going to collapse. Uh. Hmm. So, witness, any ideas to why, where these contradictions in your testimony lie? Depending on your answer, I may let my whip have its way. Okay, uh, give me a minute. 60 seconds, guys. Oh, no, no, no. Well, it was snowing that night, so I couldn't possibly have seen the stars. That rundown check is hardly a lodge, is it? And even if the stars could be seen, it isn't like I was there to look at them, right? See? You can do it if you try. <laughs> Ouch! There's only one issue here. What you saw at Dusky Bridge. I walked up to the bridge a number of times. A number of times. How many? Maybe five times? I went, one th I went once every 20 minutes. Which means you spent almost two hours at Heavenly Hall that night. You bet! Real love is about waiting with your heart in your hands. Love, you say? It was this man's intention to summon the defendant to this small shack. Using this blackmail letter. B blackmail No, no! That was simply a product of overflowing love! Ah! <laughs> You huffy, puffy, loosey goosey excuse of a whimpering, whiny wuss of a witness. <laughs> that was good reading. So, what did I. What did you see? I hope for your sake you saw a snowmobile. You huffy, puffy, loosey goosey excuse for a whimpering, whining wuss of a witness, eh? Um, well, you see. Being called those names doesn't seem to bother him at all. Oh, yeah. I didn't see a s snowmobile. Larry. You really didn't see it? Hey! No need to hit your desk! I can hear you! I didn't see it! I didn't see a s s s snowmobile Larry, say snowmobile for me, please. S s s s s snowmobile! <laughs> if you truly have nothing to hide, then why are you stammering like you just flew over a cuckoo's nest? Sh shut up! What is this? I don't know, don't ask me! 
It seems that I'll need to start from a more obvious contradiction. I'm going to strike that blow that will finally get him to spill the beans. I didn't meet anyone at the bridge that night! You didn't meet anyone? That's right! Because I've got nothing to do with this! And I'm just here to buy some Viridian paint, okay? <laughs> Come on! I expect to see those Crimson Lake faces now! It would appear that simply pressing him isn't going to be enough, Mr. Edgeworth. Indeed. It seems that he's going to claim to have nothing to do with this to the end. I don't want this guy to cost us any more time. I need to slice through his obvious contradictions and keep things moving along. Is that the lodge up in the mountains looking at the- Well, there's already a million- I... Maybe we can pre like present on- I didn't see a snowmobile! <laughs> Which she's literally stuttering over. I don't know. Otherwise, I didn't meet anyone at the bridge. <laughs> but if you went five times, wouldn't you see the snowmobile at least once? And a person driving it at least once? It's not like there's a He's ghost He's not driving. admitting that, though. Sure, but we're, we could present something, maybe. Well, think about it. Think about what Larry was doing and what happened all that night. <laughs> well, Larry was, like, going out and being like, Iris! Yeah, with... but, but after that. <laughs> oh, um, then he was randomly standing in front of the bridge that had caught on fire. <laughs> just like, well, how about that? <laughs> yep. That's pretty! So he probably would have seen something. Yeah. We know he saw something. But maybe, like, uh, I don't know what the evidence would be, though, to prove that he saw the snowmobile. Or a person. I didn't meet anybody at the bridge? I mean, wait. Maybe just present Phoenix Wright? Yeah! <laughs> oh! Larry Butts, I can understand why you might want to throw your old life away. You're pretty pathetic, and you cause all sorts of trouble. I'm sorry! But, having realized just how much of a nuisance you have been, that could be considered a step in the right direction. Edgy, are you... trying to console me? It certainly doesn't sound that way to me. However, I cannot forgive you for simply turning away from the incidents you create. Well, you're totally pitting all this on me! Now then, let us talk about the night of the murder. Sister Bikini, after seeing the murder take place, Ask Phoenix Wright to report it. Is there it. supposed to be music here? No. Okay. Thus he headed for the public phone by the bridge. There he happened to cross a certain nefarious individual. You, Larry Butts. That's right, me, in the flesh. Hmm, listen carefully, witness. It doesn't matter if you change your name. So long as you remain pretty pathetic, you'll continue to cause these incidents. That reality will not change. But, but... What do you want me to do, then? Larry, what you need to change is your inner self. What you saw that night. Testify truthfully. That is all you can do for now. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Edgy, I... I think i finally woken up! Well, I guess I could still be sleeping. But anyway, I'll do it. I'll testify. You're already... Well, I'm not sure this will go especially well. I'll ask again then, witness. What did you see on the night of the murder? Oh boy, we're gonna get like seven <laughs> testimonies. <laughs> it's Larry, we're gonna get a few. What I saw, part two. I went to the shack at around 9, so it would have been at about 10.30 p.m. Wait, what? Well, this is later. I was lying under my bedding, then a white flash almost blinded me. I looked out the window, and Dusky Bridge was on fire! There was still some thunder, but I went right away to check it out. That's when I ran into Nick. Wait, but I I went to the shack at 9 p.m., so it would have been about 10.30. Does that <laughs> no, mean- No, no, he went to the shack, so the the part of the evening he's describing would have taken place at 10.30. So he's basically saying an hour and a half past. Oh, I thought it was like- I know, that's confusing that's wording. That's confusing wording because I thought like time travel- not time travel, time zone change? It's a high paradox. Yeah. Hmm. You certainly saw quite a lot, didn't you? So, what happened to the bridge after it caught on fire? It was like me after a free day stint chasing a girl. It totally burnt out. Like, almost totally gone. I mean, trying to cross the bridge, rem burning remains was what caused Nick to fall. What did you say? Oh, don't worry. Nothing life-threatening. He just caught a cold. 
As always, hard to know if he should be called lucky or unlucky. Now, Mr. Edgeworth, please commence your cross-examination. What I saw, part two. I like to think they're both glaring at Larry and not at each other. Yeah. <laughs> I went um, to the shack Jack. around nine, so it would have been around ten. <laughs> yeah, he chose the most confusing wording possible. What did you do out there in the cold for an hour and a half? Well, if you really must know, I was busy being excited, I guess. Hmm, excited? Dare I even ask? I said the meeting time is 10 o'clock p.m., right? But I couldn't wait, and I thought she might come early, too. Well, it appears she didn't come at all in the end. Because they never arranged to meet in the first place, did they? Shut up! Don't go picking my fond memories apart! Uh, anyway, I was getting just a little worried. I thought maybe Iris had lost her way. So every 20 minutes or so, I went out to the bridge. But I didn't see anything particularly suspicious. I didn't have anything else to do, so I, I just went back to the shack to wait for her. Okay. I was lying under my bedding when a white flash almost blinded me. This light was, of course... Lightning! Like... Kapow! Like a slap from Naomi, honestly. <laughs> a big bada-boo. Or a little like that. <laughs> That's more like a punch from Miranda. <laughs> Witness, did you actually see that lightning hit the bridge? Well, I was a bit startled by the flash of light, so... Why do any girls like this guy? He's got the cash. <laughs> no, he doesn't, though. He's always like... He doesn't have the cash because he's spending it all on the girls. <laughs> I guess, but like, what kind of... Retirement plan? What's that? <laughs> well, not only that, but it's like, whenever we see Larry, it's like, Oh, my job is Santa Claus. Oh, my job is a hot dog stand vendor. <laughs> that was also Santa Claus. That was the double oh, two parts to one job. My and you job go, girlfriend! Is a, my job is a security guard that I completely failed. And my job as an artist. Artists don't make moolah, unless if they're okay. dead. Okay, in Larry's defense, though, we saw from the first case he made the Finker statue that was a clock. That was pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. So may maybe this will work out for him. It could. I just don't know. Especially <laughs> if this is the last case of the game where we have all these characters. Right. And then it's just like, new people, new chapter, new things. They go to the Larry Butts Art Museum, but, like, Larry's not there. <laughs> yeah, Larry's dead. That's how it happens if you're an artist and you have a museum. Ow, <laughs> that's sad but true. Yeah. Seeing that, what did you do? What do you think? I was burning up as well from the fire in my heart. And that's why you went to take a look at the bridge. Well, to be honest, I, it was freezing cold, so at first I thought, forget it, I'm not leaving my covers. But it had pretty much stopped snowing. So, I don't know, I changed my mind. Hmm. I'm not sure I care for the forgetted attitude you had at first witness. There was still thunder, there's thunder. But I went right away to check it out. You said right away, but exactly how long after the strike was that? Hmm. The lightning fell and then the bridge caught on fire. Maybe around five minutes? I mean, I suddenly thought, gotta go check this out! How far is this small shack you were in from the bridge? Hold on. Well, it had pretty much stopped snowing. I guess about a five minute walk? And how did Dusky Bridge look when you got there? Like I had recovered a piece of my childhood. I mean, not even the bonfire of kids that made it during school camping trips can compare. Well, should I press him for a little more info about sure. his school campfires? Oh, Not um, right now. Why didn't you call anyone? Why did you go to the bridge? Why didn't you call anyone, <laughs> idiot? <laughs> yeah, that's the one we have to do. I don't think we can expect any more relevant information. Probably best to turn to other leads. Witness, please continue your testimony. That's when I ran into Nick. Uh -oh. So you suddenly thought of- ch thought to check out the bridge? Does this mean that you initially had no intention of doing so? Well, yeah, I guess it does. It was really cold. I really did not want to go out there. If that's the case, why did you change your mind? I would like to hear your reasoning. He's like, well, the bridge would be hot, so... Yeah. Warm up. In which case, please give testimony to that effect, witness. My reasoning? Okay, reasoning, is it? Oh, that gave us stuff. I thought I'd never get another chance to see something so big burning. 
I mean, okay. So you decided to go and see what was happening? That's right! We're talking about a massive suspension bridge burning to high heaven. That's not something you see every day. A real spec... specule... Like, really special? Can we really trust a witness who's unable to pronounce spectacle? Life seems to love hitting this poor witness below the belt. Well, my motto is, hit life back as hard as I can. <laughs> I'll give you a few hits too if you'd like with my whip. He told me about the burning bridge yesterday, but there's still something that doesn't quite fit. It looks like, despite his change of heart, Larry still isn't telling us the whole truth. Also, I realized we won't get to press the final normal statement unless we say nothing here. Okay, Because it's going to change the final statement uh, if we do the correct thing as okay, well. Okay, fine. That's when I ran into Nick. How did Phoenix Wright look when you met him? Hmm. He looked like a beaten up mule. He was dead tired. I mean, he had run all the way from Hazakura Temple. He simply stood, staring at me, breathing hard for a moment. How far is it to Hazakura Temple from the bridge? On his legs, a 15 minute run, I'd say. And that's when the murder was reported. That's right! And then he took a fall from the bridge. He told me about the burning bridges. <laughs> Larry, let me ask you one thing. What is it, Edgy? What's the serious face? Why didn't you call anyone? Eh? What do you mean? Normally, when faced with a towering inferno, one would try and tell someone. There's a public phone right by Dusky Bridge, correct? Well, of course I thought of doing that! <laughs> so then, let's hear why you didn't. H huh? Yeah, okay, uh, a reason. My reason... It isn't that I didn't try to tell anyone, I just didn't have time to, okay? Well, yeah, because of Phoenix Wright's fall. I arrived at the bridge and Nick showed up less than a minute later. You claim to have arrived at the bridge at the same time as Wright? Yeah! I thought he was hanging out there because he's just like, Man, what a pretty view, huh, Nick? And there's like, <laughs> somebody's dead! <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I better tell someone about this. But then Nick came up yelling about murder! It totally made me forget about the bridge. The fire was pretty much out by then, anyway. Wait, the fire burnt out in ten seconds? <laughs> what? They built the Grand Canyon in like two seconds? <laughs> What's this feeling? I suddenly have a terrible case of unease. It was after con it was after contacting the police that Phoenix Wright fell from the bridge, correct? Yeah, that's pretty much it, more or less. He told me about the burning bridge yesterday. <laughs> but something doesn't quite fit. It looks like the butts is still what smells. Yep. All right. Well, it's probably the change statement that we would have had to trigger, so... <laughs> yeah, you already pointed out, it burned in like it 10 seconds. It burned in like 10 seconds. it started at 10.45. Nick didn't get there till at least 11.15. Which means that... <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. No, you... <laughs> <laughs> this makes me think of the Arthur thing where it's like, Oh, school's canceled today, Pinky. It, it burned down. Really? <laughs> <laughs> it did not. I can see from here. here. It only burned on, on the, the inside. inside. <laughs> <laughs> Your very existence being a contradiction, I'm not sure if you can grasp this or not. Who thought the hey, Edgy? You make me sound like some sort of alien. But your testimony is conclusively contradictory. The problem here is time. I've never been the best timekeeper, you know. Three minutes after Billy leaves on foot, you follow him on your bicycle. How long does it take for you to catch up with him? Terrible at those. This is much more simple. You saw the lightning strike Dusky Bridge, and immediately went to see what had happened. Is this correct? Yeah. Well, I wasted about five minutes first, but more or less. I have the weather data from the night of the murder here. According to this, the lightning fell at 10.45 p.m. You say it takes less than five minutes from the shack to Dusky Bridge. Meaning you probably got there at around 11 p.m. That all sounds about right, I guess. And then Nick showed up and did his falling act. That is impossible. What do you mean? 11 p.m. is when the murder occurred in Hasakura Temple. Thus, Wright was still there in the courtyard. There is no way that Larry could have encountered him at the Dusky Bridge at that time. 
Ah, uh, excuse me, I have an objection. You do? Edgy? How many times do I have to say this? I'm not Larry, I'm Maurice Dona. <laughs> it has not been proven that the murder occurred at 11 p.m. The sister only said around 11. In which case, it could have been earlier than that. Watch your footing there, Miss Franziska von Karma. The slope ahead is slippery. For there is still no way that Wright could have been at Dusky Bridge at 11 p.m. And why not? It is clearly written in here in the weather report data. It took around 30 minutes for the bridge to burn out. Therefore, the bridge must have been burning until at least 11.15 p.m. Which means, what exactly? Wright did not see the bridge as it was burning that night. He did not arrive there until after the flames had died it down. Larry, you arrived at the bridge at 11 p.m. Wright did not make it there until at least 11.15. Are you still trying to hide something from us? What happened during these missing 15 minutes? I... I feel like I just woke up. I guess I was still sleeping after all! Haha, <laughs> pinch me! Look at those pants. Oh my gosh. Order, 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 order! So there was a missing 15 minutes prior to meeting Phoenix Ray. I hardly see that as much of a problem. Wait, what? Yeah, not much of a problem at all! You are slipping. Really? The bridge is burning before your eyes, and there is a phone right next to you. Why, then, did you not report the accident? Did you simply watch the bridge burn? <laughs> <laughs> that is the problem here. Even after the bridge burnt out, he was still there. He simply stood there and didn't report anything. <laughs> that's, what it's, that's what it sounds like. This might be Larry we are talking about, but even he is incapable of being so stupid. There has to be a reason for his inaction. Edgy? I think it's about time I got serious with you, dude. Just as I thought you've been playing with us all this time. Listen, I'm... I'm gonna tell you everything. Are you sure you want to hear it all? Yes. I may really say it this time every- ah! <laughs> Then say it! Very well, I have a terribly bad feeling about this. However, let's have the witness finally give us the whole truth. Now, for this 15 minute gap, what were you doing, witness? Oh boy. The missing 15 minutes. This is gonna be great. great. I'm a doon- I'm a donum. I'm an artist! What do you think I was doing? Sketching! In front of the bridge! I was whipped up into a frenzy of art. The shock and awe that I was feeling, I transferred it all directly onto the page. Before I realized it, the flames had gone out, and then he came running up. Oh my gosh, you are so <laughs> stupid! <sighs> I suppose artists can be strange folk. That's right! I'm willing to sacrifice everything in order to draw the perfect sketch. Including the truth from the sound of it! <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, has this removed the last of your doubts? Not at all, your honor. One very large doubt still remains. And what would that be? This is a surprisingly believable story, especially considering the source. So why did he think he needed to hide it from us until now? I intend to drag the reason out of him. <laughs> You'll regret the Seji! Will we now? Yeah. The missing 15 minutes. If this is as dumb- well, this is- this is dumber! Than the headphones with the gun thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. That it's like, maybe, maybe I imagined it or something. Yeah. This it's like, the bridge is burning, burning before burning your eyes. Your There's eyes. a phone two feet from you. Gotta draw uh, this. You could have called the police and then started drawing it, but he's yeah. not in it. Anyhow, we'll have to figure that out next time. Aww. Thanks for watching everyone. Sorry if this is a little shorter than a half hour, but I think this is going to split it perfectly nicely. I believe perfectly we'll be... Nicely. Yeah, I think we'll be able to finish the trial period next episode, oh. perhaps. Okay. Unless he has way more testimonies than I remember. Probably. <laughs> Look forward to that next time. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.